Today I've seen with my own eyes, at the front line, the Ukrainian counteroffensive that's been running now for getting on for four months. And I've witnessed exactly how tough that fight is for the Ukrainians and for the Russians as well. But it's the Ukrainians that are trying to break through extremely strongly defended Russian defensive positions, which is an incredibly difficult task, particularly without air superiority, and in fact, with Russian air superiority. What I've seen, I've seen highly skilled Ukrainian troops maneuvering to attack and to repel localized Russian counter-offensives, the counter-attacks that have taken place. And one thing that did strike me, apart from, I would say, the individual courage of the soldiers on the ground and their commanders, was the value they're bringing to this fight and the effect they're bringing to this fight by the use of surveillance drones. And that those things are a combat multiplier. They enable the Ukrainians to identify Russian movement and to deploy their forces or deploy uh, artillery or mortars to kill the Russians as they attempt to, in to envelop Ukrainian troops. So the use of these drones is extremely impressive and extremely effective. Uh, they, they won't, that sort of thing isn't going to win the conflict, isn't going to win the counteroffensive. I think Ukraine needs a lot more than just drones. They do need more tanks, they do need aircraft, they do need more artillery, they need all of that. And I, I believe we should supply that to them. Uh, the, the fight that Ukraine is fighting is not just a fight for um, Ukraine, it's also a fight for the Western world. Because if this ends up in a ceasefire whereby Russia holds on to the territory it's already conquered in the east and south of Ukraine, then that amounts to a victory for Russia, a victory for Russian aggression. It amounts to a defeat for Ukraine and it amounts to a defeat for NATO. And that's not something I believe we should countenance because if there is that ceasefire, that's not the end of the story. President Putin and maybe even his successor, whoever it might be, are not just gonna leave Ukraine alone. They're gonna lick their wounds, they're gonna rebuild their forces and then they're gonna have another bite. And they may not just have another bite at Ukraine, they might have another bite at other European countries, which they also believe are illegitimate and should be dominated and controlled by Russia. So it's, it's a fundamentally important um, issue and it's a fundamentally important victory that must be achieved by Ukraine, but it cannot do so alone. It must have the support of Western countries in order to enable these extremely brave and skillful Ukrainian soldiers that I witnessed on the battlefield fighting the Russians to enable them to secure victory against the Russians.